In last week's video, we created a type that would take a promise as a generic argument, and it would unwrap that promise and return the type of the value that the promise resolves to. And the infer keyword is really what made it all possible. Infer allows us to go inside a type and pull out another type so that we can use that inside type in our own type that we're creating. And so I've been playing around with infer and I want to show you four examples of how you can use infer to create more powerful, more flexible types. Let's get generic arguments out of the way since that's what we did in last week's video. Really, the point here is that we can use infer to capture the value of any generic argument uh, and not just promises. So here we've got kind of a contrived example. I've created this Q job type, which has two arguments, the Q name, which will be a string, and then the payload, which is P. And then we can create a couple of payloads here. So we've got a welcome email, we've got a process payment. Both of these are payloads to jobs that we want to put on our theoretical queue. So then we can create the job types down here at the bottom using our queue job type. And for both of these, you can see we're just passing a hard-coded string or a string literal type as our first argument. That's the queue name and then the payload second. So let's create a type that will go inside of our jobs and pull out the name of the queue. So we want to call this Q name, and of course this is going to take uh, some job as its parameter. So we'll say uh, job extends uh, Q job, and what we're going to do is basically the same thing, right? We use this conditional statement out here to allow us to infer the name, and if we can infer a name then we'll return n, otherwise we'll return never. We're using infer in this place to capture whatever type is the first generic argument to the queue job. Great, so we can test this with a type, let's call it email queue, and this will be the queue name of the welcome email job. We could also try the payment queue, and we can capture the queue name of the process payment job. Excellent, so with those in place, let's hover over email queue, and we can see it's of type email, the string literal. And the payment queue is our batch queue. So very simply, it's easy to use infer to capture generic arguments. Okay, let's look at another way that we can use the infer keyword to capture types, this time with arrays. And to do this, we're gonna use another one of the TypeScript challenges. So in this challenge, we have to implement the JavaScript function array.includes uh, in the type system. So our type is gonna take two arguments and the output should be a Boolean, true or false. So if we look at some of the examples here, we can see we have includes, we get an array as our first argument, and then the value that we want to test for inclusion as our second argument. Here's our basic type to start us off. We have includes with two arguments, t being a read-only array, and u being our other value. So as we know, we can only use the infer keyword with the extends keyword in TypeScript. So we're going to check our array by saying, asking, does t extend? an array, but this is where infer comes in. So we can infer the first value in the array, and then we can use the rest operator to infer the rest of the values in the array. So now that we've isolated that first type, we can compare f to u and see if they're the same type. Now, testing if two types are equal in TypeScript uh, is kind of challenging. We're gonna cheat just a little bit. We're gonna use this equal utility type that the type challenges library provides. So we'll say, if uh, u and f uh, extends true. If this returns true, then we ha can do a couple of things here. So actually, before I do that, I'm gonna break this into a couple of lines so that it's a little easier to read. So our inner conditional here will say, if u and f are equal, uh, then we'll just wanna return true. Uh, otherwise, we need to recurse and check to see if the rest of the array includes the u value. So we'll say includes the rest of the array and u, and if neither of those things are true, then we'll return false. All right, so we've got this inner conditional here, which does the recursion for us. And as you can see, now all of our tests are passing. This is the second way that we can use the infer keyword. We can use it to pull types out of an array. And the neat thing here too, is that we can use this with the rest operator in order to capture a subset of an array. So we've looked at generic arguments, we've looked at arrays, but we can also use the infer keyword to capture values uh, related to function signatures. So we could capture both the parameters in a function or the return type itself. And these are two other TypeScript challenges that we're gonna look at. So let's take a look. The first one here is implementing the built-in parameters generic. 
Obviously, TypeScript has a parameters utility. We're going to implement our own. And we've been given a basic form of it here. So we have my parameters takes an argument t, which extends some function with any arguments and any return type. And you may be able to kind of guess where we're going with this now, right? Because we've kind of been following a pretty predictable pattern. So we can check to see if t extends a function. And instead of uh, any, we're going to say the args should be infer a. And the return type can be any. But if this matches, then we can just return a, otherwise never. It's really that straightforward. In place of the array of any that we have in our generic argument out here, we can just replace it with infer a to capture those arguments. If you want to play around with this one, look at how you might be able to capture just the first argument, or maybe just the second. Or maybe there's a way that you can index in and choose which argument you want to capture. Some fun homework for you. Now, it's not that hard to do the return type either. Here's another challenge where we have to implement the return type generic. Again, something that TypeScript comes with, but something we can implement without too much trouble. Now, they haven't given us quite as much help with this one. T could be anything. Um, but we don't actually have to have the condition inside of the generic argument position here. We can just do it in here. So let's say T extends. Uh, some function, and in this case, we don't care about the arguments, but what we do care about, of course, is the return type. And so we say infer r uh, in the position where you would normally put the return type in the function signature. And if we have that, we can return r, otherwise we'll just return never, and as you can see, this does satisfy all of the tests. One of the cool things I want to point out to you here is that both the parameters utility type and the return type utility type are built into TypeScript. And so because of that, you might be tempted to think that there's some special magic going on because they're part of the system and that you can't recreate them, but we just did. I think that's a real testament to just how flexible and powerful uh, the TypeScript type system is. Okay, we've got one more example to look at, and this blew my mind when I first found out you could do this in TypeScript. We're gonna be using template literal syntax with the infer keyword. So the idea here is that we want to implement a trim type that takes t, which is some string, and returns that string with the white space removed from both ends. It's a simple trim function, except in the type system. If we take a look at the tests, we can see that we need to be able to remove spaces, new lines, and tab characters from our strings. So we're going to start by creating our own helper type that captures that list of characters. So above trim here, Let's create a type, and I'm just going to call it characters, and this will be a string union. So we have an empty space, we have a new line, and we have a tab character. So these are the characters we need to remove. So let's take a look at trim now. It takes s, which extends string, so we're going to need to trim the right side and the left side of the string independently. So let's take a look at this. The idea here is we want to say, does s extend, and we're going to use the template literal syntax, does it extend our characters array followed by something we can infer? So we'll infer ss for substring. So what's going on here is we're doing some basic pattern matching. We're saying, does s match the pattern one of these characters that we want to remove plus some other stuff at the end? And if it does match that pattern, then we know that we want to remove that one character that we're matching in the front and probably continue to process the string recursively. If we do match a character at the front, then what we're going to do is trim SS. And we're going to keep taking characters off the front. And if we don't, well, for the moment, let's just return S and we'll see what happens here. So if you take a look at the tests down below, all of the tests with only extra white space at the front of the string are passing. That's because we're just trimming off the front. So we want to trim off the back now as well. So let's go ahead and recurse that way. So instead of just returning S here, we want to do another match. And we'll say, does S extends where we can infer some substring, and then we have our characters after it. So in this case, once we trim all the characters off the front, we want to go and match the same pattern for characters off the back. So we'll say if that's the case, then we're going to trim SS, otherwise we can return S. And now we can see that our type is passing all of the tests. So to take a quick look through that one more time, we match the characters off the front one at a time, recursing through, trimming them off. Then we match all the characters at the back, recursing through, trimming them off. 
and finally we have our new s that we can return. And the neat thing here is that s will always extend string, but at some point it will not match this pattern or this pattern. And so that's when we just return s. Well, I've had a lot of fun learning about the infer keyword and how to use it to create these powerful complex types. I hope you've learned something too. Thanks for watching.